The Vatican is right now promoting something that, as students of prophecy, we have been expecting for years. Check this out. The Vatican has stated that China is the best example of church's social doctrine. It says conservative Catholics are expressing shock at Pope Francis's zeal in embracing the totalitarian government of China by first agreeing to replace underground church leaders with state-chosen hacks. And now the top of Vatican officials saying those who best realize the social doctrine of the churches are the Chinese. Those of you that frequent my website know all about my Vatican's Socialist Agenda page and why I built it years ago. But for those unaware, I I just show how the last three popes of Rome know that if they are to do for their dying God, as prophecy says they will, they are left with no choice but to push a socialist format in all nations under their thumb. And since we see they have done just that in most nations around the world, right down to changing their constitutions, and it has become obvious here in America about how our government has been bowing to many socialist changes in the way our government has been doing business, as well as passing laws, new laws, the last few decades, and especially since September 11th. So much so that in the last election, an admitted socialist by the name of Bernie Sanders was openly embraced by literally millions of Americans as a man they thought could be president. And so it's par for the course for the man of sin in Rome to declare the way their churches are socially structured in communist China as being a good example for all the churches around the world. And just so you know, this Vatican statement comes after 18 months of negotiations with leaders in Beijing to plot a normalization of relations. And keep in mind, this suggestion by Rome isn't only directed to the Roman Catholic churches. Since June 26, 2000, all the Protestant churches have declared themselves under the leadership of the Pope's One World Church, or World Council of Churches, as he calls it. And yes, this includes the Seventh-day Adventist Church. As most historians will tell you, socialism is the final stepping stone towards communism. And as students of prophecy have been saying for decades, you simply cannot enforce the mark of the beast in a free society. It has to be a socialist and even communist structured society for Rome's mark to be realized. And so this is why the Vatican prelates see no issue boasting about China's extreme anti-Christian church format as being a good idea for all churches under Vatican rule. As we know, the ten toes of Daniel are already on paper awaiting the other shoe to drop. The only obstacle in Rome's way at present are the churches. And since they already bowed to the Pope's World Council of Churches, as well as allowed the governments of the world to con and even force some of them into a church in state format so as to create the image of the beast in Rome, which in the USA is called the 501c3, in Canada it's the T4117, and so on. And so all the wolves on the pulpits are going to do whatever their man of sin in Rome demands, because right now, the basic reality is they have absolutely no choice. Their fruits have declared boldly they no longer follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. But as prophecy predicted, these preachers of filthy lucre follow the cash wherever it piles up. All the pastors know to step out of the WCC and the 501c3 would be a literal financial disaster for them. And so their chosen God has become, as James chapter 5, verse 3 predicted, their gold and silver. And it is cankered. And the rest of them are going to be a witness against all of them. And it's going to eat their flesh as if it were fire, because they've heaped their treasure together for the last days. That's why you only see the 501c3 and all these other nonprofit type setups and all these other nations happening in the last days. And for those of you that claim your pastors don't agree with such things, think again. Your pastors already agreed with the Pope on Sunday Sabbath, which exposes them as the many false prophets that Jesus spoke of. They also embrace pagan holidays like Christmas and Easter, as well as declaring Allah is God and homosexuality is no longer considered an abomination unto God. And that's just a few points. I mean, there's no getting around the fact that the wolves will follow the pack just as prophecy declared they would. Truth is, to believe otherwise is to call the God that wrote those prophecies a liar. And I would hope and pray that most Christians today would choose rather to repent than to blaspheme. Thank you for watching. God bless.